great actually um, if you guys hadn't seen the replay will be available until 5 p.m. today but it was uh, Amanda Oleander uh, Mario Armstrong uh, Tasman hi Laura hey MQ um, Mario Armstrong uh, Tasman and Ryan a Bell and we all um, did a panel on uh, the power of live streaming for the social bakers uh, group oh hey how's from Germany how's it going thank you so much scope scribe Cindy thank you oh, you love my scopes thanks you so much yeah it was a lot of fun um, yeah we Amanda and I hung out um, at the speaker dinner the night before I've known Amanda now um, of course from Periscope Summit um, and from uh, one of the other uh, LA events Adrian what's up Adrian and Katie look at that all my favorites are in here so yeah it was fun um, the audience at the social social bakers is very um, I would say Facebook smart and data smart so it was very um, very interesting to see how what their questions were and, and their thoughts of Periscope oh I'm glad you like my medium stuff that's my new um, actually that's part to do with this um, broadcast is um, Really, I, I, I'm ta I, I've been talking to different influencers. I've been working with different brands on identifying um, periscopers and how they have value. And um, yes, I always wear my Steeler gear. Um, and how they have value. And so much of the value um, goes above and beyond just the individual periscope, or it goes above and beyond your periscope following. Hey, the chase is in the house. How's it going? Yes, it was a lot of fun, uh, Alice. It was it was a blast. Ryan Abel. Uh, did a great job up there. It was fun, and we and it was really fun because we were even live streaming from the audience and and teaching people. Um, you know, I can tell you uh, the amount of brands that came up to me afterwards that are pretty big brands um, said that they were really blown away with how different how the different people are using it and different influencers. But one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about or share um, from a standpoint of what value is, people want to know that not only do you have a big uh, Periscope following, but you're able to bridge that and leverage that across other networks or at least one other network where it's not all living in one app and one um, medium and one uh, location. So thank you guys for inviting your followers. Thank you for swiping and all the hearts and, and, and even sharing it to Twitter because remember part of the thing for us to evangelize Periscope is if we swipe right and we share it to Twitter, it allows us to get people that maybe don't know about Periscope to actually download the app or at worst they click on the link and are watching this on their browser. If you're watching this on the browser, you can just um, send me a tweet at iSocialFans and I'll make sure to answer your question or engage you afterwards because I know if you're watching on the browser, unfortunately you're not able to comment on uh, the periscopes. So for me, um, one of the things that I, was a big takeaway for me is that if you're not taking your content and repurposing it or really building and uh, uh, leveraging your audience either on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook page or Facebook group or your email newsletter, one of the big problems about it in my opinion is that you end up really having to convince people in a language that they're not familiar with. So a lot of these brands came to me and said, I don't care how many hearts somebody has, I don't care um, how many followers they have on Periscope. I want to know with my existing social media what is their value to me on that social media as well and how do I bridge that audience and so you have some people that have a huge following on Periscope but it really have either neglected or forgot about the importance of some of their other communities and really remember if you're relying only on the community that exists exists already on this app let's say that number is 15 million uh, downloads that's still a very small minute piece when you have one point however billion people on Facebook so really what I, uh, and I'm actually surprised, I talked to a lot of um, Periscopers, and one of the things that surprised me is there are a lot of people that, um, you don't always have to take your, your Periscope thing and turn it into a blog post, but really what you do need to do is you need to understand and let your audience know that they can engage with you 24 seven outside of Periscope. Because remember, not everybody can watch you live, not everybody, not all brands want that live content. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Cindy, I appreciate that. Um, but really what they do want is they want the ability to continue the conversation and for you to be able to build your audience when you're not on live stream. And that is the unique thing about live stream because live streaming, remember, unlike other platforms, someone can't come on here and comment to you when you're not live streaming. So if you're not on Twitter, if you're not active on Twitter and you're not live streaming, let's say you do it twice a day, um, when you're not on, when you're not broadcasting, how do people, how does your community get in touch with you? How do they reach out to you? How can they build rapport with you? How can they learn more about you? If you're not active on all and on another social network, and I don't care which one it is, I believe Twitter is is the is the best one because Twitter allows you to connect without limitations and is an unfiltered fire hose of communities. Um, I believe Twitter allows you to not have to know who you want to follow, although all you need to know is find people that share a common pa passion and purpose. But I also have been doing, um, for those that someone just said about medium.com, if you go to medium.com slash isocialfans, one of the things that I've been doing is I'm actually embedding my, um, my catch replays, um, creating a, a short paragraph, creating a graphic, and making it into a blog post so that it sits around from an SEO value. 
it seems like Periscope has a greater impact per viewer than other platforms. I agree completely with that, Alyssa. Um, and part of the reason that is is because this is authentic. I don't have to convince you that I'm real on a blog post, on other social networks. There's a lot of trust that it takes trust a long time. I don't care how many blog posts you write before you trust somebody. On Periscope, that 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 ability to, to gain trust is at a much faster rate, which is freaking awesome. But with great trust comes great power. With great power comes great responsibility. With great responsibility comes great influence. And the problem with that is that if people aren't leveraging other platforms and continuing the conversations and understanding what that power means, then they're gonna not only gonna represent the wrong brands, but they're gonna alienate their audience and become disconnected. So this is something you know I'm working with some big brands right now, and I'm gonna build out um, influencer programs of periscopers, right? So I want uh, you are like a live streaming Yoda. Oh, thank you. Um, but I, I, what I'm really trying to focus on is okay, how do I show value? you to a brand but at the same time not only showing value on your live stream but letting you know that we're building a community you're not just building a bunch of people that can tap a screen uh, do I ever rest um, I, I, I try to rest sometimes but I uh, I will openly admit that um, I have not been resting I'm leaving New York now heading back to Washington DC tonight um, but yeah, so for me, so for everyone that's listening to this, maybe you're not on another social network right now. This is what I believe you need to do: is think of it this way: What can I share on another commun on another platform to bridge my community? So if you have, let's say you have 3,000 followers on Periscope, how can I let my 3,000 followers maybe gain insights from me? And I think the bridging of that audience is very easy because your Periscope audience already trusts you. They're going to go where they where you want them to go. So something that I recommend for if you have, let's say you want to go to Instagram, tell people that you're going to give, you're going to start providing, you're going to start posting a graphic uh, on the day of your of your live streams. That, that that graphic every day on Instagram is going to tell people when you're going live on Periscope. Therefore, your audience will start to follow you on Instagram because you're going to be give them instant value, and they're going to start. They're going to immediately go over there and say, "Hey, now instead of uh, being annoyed by the push notifications that exist on Periscope, I can actually just go on to this other platform and I can um, I can get this information from Instagram or let's say it's Facebook page. Tell people to turn on their notifications for the Facebook page, and you promise not to post but two times a day on your Facebook page. But you want them to go over there, so if they ever have a question for you and they're not you're not on live stream, or maybe you want them to submit ideas ideas for future periscopes let them go over to your Facebook page tell them that you can submit ideas and you'll start bringing those ideas in because when we're talking when I'm talking to brands when I'm talking to people the really big problem becomes they don't know how to value hearts they don't know how to value the whole element of what we're believing but what they do know how to value is community and if you're able to prove that you have a community, because I believe if you have a bunch of followers on one network, that is not a community, that is a network, because they are brought to you because of you. But if you are able to, to actually leverage that onto another platform where they are connecting with you, not because it's just you, but because they have a shared purpose and shared passion, that is the key. Oh, thank you so much, Steps. Thank you, uh, Adrian. So yeah, I mean, I'm working with brands of all sizes, from small businesses to mid-size to, you know, I just had lunch with a, a brand that was um, is a fairly large brand. Um, it's a, let's just put it out there, it's a um, candy company. Um, and they're looking, uh, the candy company is looking to figure out how they want to leverage influencers to target unique um, audiences. And one of the things that we were asking me about was like, okay, well, um, how many of these people can I, can I leverage from a standpoint of understanding what their story is like when they're not on live stream? And so many people have only built their content and it only lives on Periscope. And if that's the case, and you're not even using catch, you have a really tough time of showing your value and demonstrating it. And that to me is the key. Because if you're not able, if you're just able to say, hey, I have 23 million hearts, but yet you can't even watch your replays because they're 24 hours and they disappear, how do you prove to them that what that means? What's the first step to building a personal brand? It's easy, defining your story. And your, def your story is the hardest part to define. My recommendation is to define your story, ask your best friend, ask your worst enemy, and then you yourself write down your story. And then from that, you decide to build out what your story is gonna be. Remember, in the world that we live in with live streaming, your story must be authentic and true. Do not lie to yourself or you will not exist in this platform. Because the key to success on Periscope and the key to success on live streaming is pretty simple. People want to talk to people that are real. People that don't want to. How do you unblock someone? Um, it, it, when you go to your account, go to your profile, and one of the tabs will be blocked people, and click on that, and you can click and unblock the people that you did. How do you get followers? So, followers on Periscope is pretty easy, in my opinion. You bridge your other network and you educate people where you already have a following. So, let's say you have an email newsletter that's pretty popular. 
go on your email newsletter, give people a taste of the content and let them know, hey, every Friday I'm gonna do a live stream, feel free to jump over there. The next email newsletter you put out, put a, put a three minute clip of your Periscope embedded in the video there and saying, hey, just letting you guys know this is the taste of the content you're able to get if you were following me on Periscope. The next one, give them instructions and say, hey, if anybody needs help, I'm gonna have open office hours Friday at 4 p.m. for anybody that needs help downloading and using Periscope. When starting out with nothing, it's about connecting. So if you're starting, yeah, I'm driving, um, we're in New York heading to JFK, so um, the connection. But I'll, I'll because the, every one of my videos are uploaded to Catch automatically. So if you go to catch.me slash isocialfans, you can watch any of my 650 uh, live streams. So catch.me slash isocialfans, you can watch any of those live streams over there. If you're missing any of this um, or if any of this connection was going in and out for you, feel free to jump it over there and grab that content. But um, I really believe that to, to build your following on Periscope, it requires a lot of work, but ideally it starts with a lot of listening, watching a lot of other people's streams, and engaging and adding comments to add value. Don't get on there and say, hey, follow me please, follow me please, that's not gonna add value. Get in there, share your thoughts, share your insights, and after you share that insights and you share those thoughts, people are gonna go, wow, that person probably has some good information. Another recommendation is if you're starting out, you're gonna to wanna to scope once every 24 hours. The reason that is, is if you have a really low follower count, people are gonna read your profile, see your low follower count, and they're gonna to wanna to click on one of your videos to decide if your content is worth them following. And remember, you do not get a, you will have a, under the recent section, you'll have a zero if you hadn't streamed in the last 24 hours. So for me, if you make sure you stream in that 24 hour window, then you won't have to worry about that because you'll have that number one there. Someone will read your profile. Someone will get there. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Cindy. Yes, I try to be real. I try to share what I've learned. I'm not an expert. I'm not a guru. I'm not uh, one. I've been very blessed to be able to keynote around the world on the power of live streaming authenticity. And really with my business model, it's a lot about um, educating and evangelizing the platform as a whole. Um, is it good to scope more times a day? Here's the thing. I have a pretty easy rule when it comes to how many times and what's the best time. Everybody has a unique audience and great content is only relative and decided on based on your audience. And for me, how do you figure out how often you should scope? Here's the thing. Nobody will ever say you're helping too much or providing too much value. Therefore, as long as you're scoping of value, people will not get annoyed. If you're scoping and wasting people's time and you're just scoping for scoping's sake, people will unfollow you, they'll turn off your notifications, and that's actually worse than not scoping at all. So for me, the idea here is make sure you have a plan and a strategy. Just because it's live doesn't mean you don't have to have a strategy. And re oftentimes, what people often forget is they say, hey, why do people no longer show up to my streams? If you ignore the comments, that is the key. Which people could get that? No, I agree, Deanna. I, and then, and I think, I, you know, I think, um, you know, I talked about this earlier um, on a different person scope. But um, I think we're, ch we are, we're we're in a changing of a guard here at um, of of how can you help spread scope DE tag if it stands for German scopes? So what you need to do is you start reaching out to other Germans, and all of you start using that. I would create, um, you know, use it on Twitter and reach out to other Germans that are actually periscoping, and so that you would have to educate them on why they need to do it. Because remember, people don't want to, they don't, they know how to put a hashtag in their, their title. They want to know why it's valuable to them. So the idea that you're either supporting people with uh, similar hashtags or you're monitoring it for um, connecting with influencers, but if you focus on just the what, not the how and the why, you'll really struggle in what value you can provide. You use it on Twitter or start it on a website. That's a good way to do it. So now it's just starting about educating people. But the strange thing is there's somebody for every kind of scope on here from boring to damn. I agree. So that's why I say, so I talk a lot about creating great content. And someone always asks me, Brian, what does great content look like? Great content means that you're, right, you're creating content that your audience is consuming. If you know and listen to your audience, that's great content. It doesn't mean it has to be business focused. If you're a comedian, if you're a life coach, if you're a doctor, if you're whatever, great content is actually determined, and not by me, by your audience. The problem is so many people think that they're just gonna create content because of what they want to do. They, they believe in their head it's great content. But if it's not relative to your audience, if it's not engaging, if it's not providing value, if it's wasting their time, it is no longer great, uh, great um, uh, content. So I don't care what your background is, I don't care who you are, I don't care what type of content it is, but if you're focusing on providing value to your audience, that is the key. And that's why my rule of thumb is, um, oh thank you so much Laura, my rule of thumb is don't ever have your periscope or your phone further than an arm's length away because if you can't read the comments, you're not using this platform correctly. How do you focus on message you have that is sharing value and keeping up with comments at the same time? Lots of practice Stevie, 
Um, Stevie, uh, for me, I was very lucky. I used to run, uh, I still run three Twitter chats a week and I do a Google Hangout while I'm doing the Twitter chat, right? So um, while I'm interviewing someone on video, I've always had to monitor the Twitter feed and add input. So that multitasking la level of knowing what I want to say and not being sidetracked when someone asks me a comment is something that takes a crap load of training. One of my keys is if, you do, if you're not comfortable answering the comments and questions throughout, tell people at the beginning of the scope, say, hey, this is what I'm gonna talk about. Just so you guys know, I would love to hear your comments. If you have questions for me, save them to the end, and when I'm done delivering my content, I will ask for questions and I'll be able to answer them then, but I don't wanna get sidetracked, I'm not great. So like Subi Zimmerman does that. Subi Zimmerman, she doesn't wanna get off track. She wants to deliver her value and then open it up for questions. As long as you educate your audience and not make them feel like they're not being heard, it'll be fine. It's the same thing when I go on stage. When I went on stage yesterday, I grabbed Periscope and said, hey, just so you guys know, I'm not gonna be able to answer questions now. I'm gonna get on stage, and give my keynote after I get off stage I'll grab Periscope again and I'll answer all your questions because I educate them people don't get in here and complain this this community is pretty awesome but you have to educate them you can't get mad at them for saying well everybody's mad because they think I'm not listening because they don't they don't have any reason to believe they're not listening and it does get better and it takes practice and I can tell you one of my one of my other secrets is I have five rules that I do in every single scope I, I welcome people into the room I introduce myself I provide value I answer questions I recap and then I get the heck off the stream. And what I mean by that is I respect people's time. So I don't just sit around waiting for you know nonsense to happen. I, I try to focus on adding that value and respecting other people's times. And that includes answering their questions. And when the questions stop coming in and people are, are done getting value, I don't have a problem even stopping that scope and starting a new one with a different topic or something. Because for me, understanding what value you can provide and ultimately the difference you're making is how people keeps people coming back. I love the comments. I can never get too many questions. I mean, you guys can ask any kind of questions you want. I love those questions. But there's other people that really they're focused and they're, and, and they're learning. And the nice thing about Periscope is the audience is super forgiving as long as you educate them. If you're fake, if you try to if you try to fake it and say I'm gonna be the best person, I'm gonna be the best periscoper ever. I've only done two periscopes. People are, are not gonna be are not gonna enjoy that. But if you start it out and say, Hey, I'm new to this. I'm getting used to how fast these questions disappear. Um, don't be mad if I um, if I don't get to your questions. Um, and and I you know yes, there it is right there, Dr. Cindy. And it's on my website. If you guys go to um, thinklikeafan.video, so just thinklikeafan.video in your browser, I have the graphic with those five tips in it. Uh, and you can sign up for my email newsletter as well if you want to. But without comments or interaction, this won't be called Periscope. No, it would be called Ustream, Livestream, Justin TV. That's what this would be called. Or YouTube, for that matter. So the, the key here to me is actually, I, told, I talk about this all the time, but the light bulb went off for me the very first Meerkat I ever did. So I did Meerkat. I was in Barcelona. I clicked the live stream button. I walked about 15 feet and someone said, hey, Brian, is that the new Samsung phone? Can you go over there, over there and show me the phone? That minute, everything changed for me. And the reason it changed is because my audience was able to help shape the content. And it wasn't just me preaching at them. They actually were able to input. We're able to have, a, we're having a conversation right now. You know, the, Stevie asked the question, I'm answering a, a question back and forth. It wasn't what Brian thought was in his head that I wanted to deliver. And I think that is a huge difference that a lot of people forget that really what it comes down to is you want to create conversations, but you also want to make sure that it is, you know, kind of staying on book. What's up, Kevin? How are you, my friend? All right, the sunlight is like crazy here. Um, but yeah, we're on the way to JFK right now. Um, using a Samsung, no, I am on um, my iPhone 6 Plus S. Um, I, I actually carry three phones with me, so, um, but that's just because uh, I do so much live streaming between devices, so I usually have one device to live stream and then one device to comment while I'm live streaming keynotes and such. So I have, um, this is a 6 Plus S. Um, this is my, uh, look at that. See, there's all the hearts. Yes, sir. Born and raised in Pittsburgh. Stewart fan. So that's my advice on that. So what I, what I wanted to kind of share was, you know, I talked to some brands today and, and after talking to them, I'm flying home. I'm, I'm working on a, on a couple different things, a couple different projects. And one of the big things, though, is make sure that you understand that you, you need to build a community and your community cannot only exist on this platform. So in my opinion, you really have to focus on figure out a way to allow your audience to engage with you when you're not broadcasting. Periscope helps keep focus as opposed to Blab, where it's free for all. Um, I love Blab. I'm a huge Blab um, fan, but I believe Blab is actually the the great extension of Periscope. It's not a replacement, because for me, if it's a great topic, a great discussion, and lots of people in my comment section are adding so much value, I would love. I, I will say, hey, let's let's go all go jump on Blab because now we can collaborate and have more of a dynamic conversation and have more different views from different viewpoints. Where Periscope, a majority of the the viewpoint, although it's a conversation back and forth, majority of the Q and A is coming between me 
me and the audience. It's not between the audience and the audience. Uh, I love Snapchat. Yeah, Snapchat is awesome. Uh, that was that was the other brand I was meeting with today, a company called Del Mundo, um, who's run by Nick Cicero. So um, they actually do some great stuff with Snapchat. So I'm working with some Snapchat influencers on using that with Periscope so that we can do, do two different types of storytelling and then really amplify some of these brands. So that's kind of the focus I'm doing. Big Snapchat fan. I believe Snapchat is like raw, real, one-to-one or one-to-many um, engagement. But I love Twitter because it allows me to connect with people without borders, without limitations. And that's something that I really believe in. I think it's something that if, if you get any takeaway from this Periscope, from this, this one you're watching, what I recommend you to do is just think about it. Think about it this way. It's very simple. Where can my audience engage me, provide input, and provide value when I'm not on live stream. And the other thing is, how do I educate them on where that is? So in your, you know, you don't have to give a call to action. What you can do is you can say, just so you guys know, I posted on Instagram this morning that this was the time that I was gonna go on Periscope. If you guys wanna find out future times, make sure you follow me on Instagram. My Instagram account is isocialfans, or Instagram backslash, or Instagram.com slash isocialfans. It's about educating, it's not about selling them on it. So you don't have to convince them to go over there. Don't make people go over to the other platforms. As soon as you try to force them, it's like my five-year-old. I tell my five-year-old what to do, she tells me no. But if I give her a reason to and I tell her that, that what's gonna happen if she gets there. So yeah, that's the questions I ask you guys. Where, where is your audience gonna engage you offline? And then ultimately, how are you gonna educate them on your periscopes? I think if you guys do that, it'll work out really well. What's up, Matt? Uh, my New York trip was good, my friend. I'm in, my, in the Uber right now on the way of JFK. Um, I'll be back here on Friday for a short trip and then I'll be back here uh, next Monday as well. Uh, I'm giving a keynote on Monday um, at an event in, uh, in Times Square. So I'll be back to New York three times, three times in the next week. But uh, I get to go home and see my kids and uh, hang out at home for a couple of days, uh, build out a couple of these programs that I'm working on. Uh, and then I'll be back on, uh, on Friday and then back again on, on next week. So uh, working it out though. So yeah, hopefully you guys found value in there. So was there any uh, last minute questions you guys wanted to ask? on kind of this idea of bridging your community and making sure you're connecting beyond what's on live stream. I want a calendar of all these events. I emailed you your pics links. Oh, okay, sweet, thanks, man. Oh, Matt, I think I saw that. I think I saw the email come through. I didn't, I didn't open it yet, so I'll open it. Um, actually, I'll open it when I get to the airport because I'll have some time at the airport. All right, so um, how, did you, um, how did you even hear about Engage? Um, I didn't know about Engage. Um, the CEO of Engage actually reached out to me after watching my Periscope Summit keynote and asked me to come speak at Engage. So um, they sent me a, a Twitter DM and said we would like to hire you to come speak at, at um, Engage based on what they had watched at the Periscope Summit. So um, I wasn't even familiar with Social Bakers before that. I didn't even know what the company did. Um, so I had to do a little, my own little research there. But um, yeah, they found me thanks to my Periscope Summit uh, keynote, which has been a, a big trend. A lot of my, um, my new speaking gigs and a lot of things that I've been working on have recently come um, by way of people watching that Periscope Summit keynote. So I'm uh, very thankful for that awesome opportunity in the community. I'm at Social Bakers. Oh, at Social Media Workaround. That's awesome. Oh, thank you, Dr. Cindy. That means a lot. Well, I, yeah, I can tell you um, I'm almost over 15 keynotes booked only booked solely because of the Periscope Summit keynote. Uh, for whatever reason, there was a lot of that audience had never seen me present before. I've been presenting for many years on mostly technology, um, social business, employee advocacy topics. But for whatever reason, the Periscope Summit one um, reached a new audience because I have a lot of people that have been, uh, that are, yes, all paid gigs. Um, unfortunately, I'm on my own now, therefore I can't take any, uh, I can't take any speaking gigs that aren't paid. Uh, I, unfortunately, I have a lot of people that have great reasons, great events, great um, opportunities that they want me to present at. I have to, unfortunately, because of the, the situation I'm in now, working on my own, that I have to let them know that I can't do that. You are truly amazing, your content is always great, and your energy is, oh, thank you so much. That means a lot. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I've been very. My my mom will joke that I came out talking, and um, in 2004, one of my bosses actually told me that um, he's the only guy. He wrote in my my yearly review that I was the only guy he knew that could actually be passionate when reading the phone book. <laughs> uh, what's up, Ryan? Ryan Brello in the house. But um, yeah, so that's that. I've been lucky that. Will brands hire people just to Periscope or live stream? I don't believe so. I believe. Brands will hire people to amplify and to storytell. They're not gonna hire you just to click a button. Um, and don't mistake that, I'm not saying that it's as easy as clicking a button, but I've I presented and keynoted with a crap load of brands and a crap load of people. And so many of them um, really want, they wanna know what value, are you gonna reach them a new audience because of your influence and your piece? 
You're not a motor mouth. <laughs> Thank you. Well, yeah, I try to add value and share my insights and what I've learned because I think together, if I share and help you guys create better streams, then ultimately whenever I'm working with brands and they open up Periscope and the content's better, they're going to have a better chance of hiring me. So I work really hard at trying to share exactly what I learn, what works. I'm not guaranteeing it works for you or your audience, but my career has nothing to do with social media or tech, but I even find myself learning from your message. Oh, thank you so much. That's a worst username ever is like the coolest username ever, of course. I'm now following you on Periscope there, Omar. Um, that means a lot. And, I, and really, I'm not focused on teaching you. I don't believe it's about uh, social media or technology. I actually believe it's about storytelling, and everybody has a story to tell. Ultimately, it's how you, st how you tell it and how you stand out from the noise. And for me, standing out from the noise means being myself and doing it in my own manner, which means talking fast and sharing it everywhere. Once Periscope is embedded in tweets, think brands will scramble to figure out. Uh, I don't know if they will care because I don't know if they realize the value of it being embedded in tweets. But I will tell you, I believe brand the new play for brands is there's two plays. There's the play where you want to help a brand um, so that they can eventually do their own Periscopes, or you want a brand to hire you because they want you want them to treat you as an influencer and they want access to your audience. Um, it's not one. It's it can't be both because you're not going to be one. That, you know you can't. There's a different, you know, the reason people that hire Vine stars and the reason they hire Snapchat stars is because they have a built-in audience and they have a built-in talent. So they're a comedian, they're an artist, or whatever the hell they are, whatever their talent is. Um, and if you're focused more on less on having a talent and more on just using the platform, it's going to be a hard sell because they're going to not understand what exactly they're doing. How's it going, Dr. Brett? Well, welcome. I'm glad that uh, this is your first time. Brian, would you ever offer to train a trainer for speakers? Um, Yes, so um, that was actually asked of me at um, Periscope Summit. A couple of the Periscopers actually asked um, about doing some speaker training. Um, I was very lucky. In 2005, um, I was presenting to the Joint Chiefs of Staff in the, in the Pentagon, and they actually sent me to uh, what they called uh, CT, uh, I think it was CTI, which was cer uh, Certified Technical, uh, CTTI, uh, Certified Technical Training, where they taught us how to pr uh, public speak, how to train um, to groups of between 25 and 100, and how to command a room, how to read nonverbal cues. Um, and all of that, I was very lucky and blessed that happened early on in my career. That's why, um, for me, speaking becomes so easy. I'm, my most comfortable place is on stage. So give me, um, you know, I spoke at VMworld uh, a couple of years where they had 12,000 people in the audience, or at Periscope Summit where it's 500 people in the audience, and I can talk at and with everybody. Um, but that's a great question about, um, I would have to figure out how it would be delivered because I don't know if webinar form would be right. It would might have to be a, it would have to be like a workshop, maybe like something like the day before or day after the Periscope Summit or something. But um, yes, go Steelers for sure. But yeah, so that, I mean that's kind of my thoughts. So all those, thank you guys for joining. Um, really, the gist of this, there's two takeaways that I, I recommend anybody that's using Periscope. Um, there's two things that I feel that you have to ask yourself if you want to be able to bridge your audience and convey your influence. Yes, Le'Veon Bell break. It. Yes, it was horrible, especially because it was the first game we finally got uh, all of our team back. You would, I would love it. It's chat. Okay, that's that's chat, Dr. Steve Brown. I would love to. I would love to know more about what you think the value would be, and then how it would be delivered. Because um, I'm doing workshops for brands now. Like so, um, so I have. If you're if you're a brand and you want to um, figure out a way to embrace live streaming um, with your employees and your your own brand handles, I'm doing workshops where they can hire me to come in and do a five-hour workshop and teach them the, the art of amplification, the nuances of live streaming and live tweeting, and then really um, some of the storyboarding, the idea of how do you build a story around uh, your live streams. Um, so I'm working with brands on that side, but there's also might be a, a workshop play in there for um, turning and helping to amplify uh, live streamers on um, presenting. Awesome. Brands barely have employees that use social media, so live streaming is tough because so many are shy. Actually, Matt, I think it's the opposite. The reason that people, um, that most brands aren't great on social media is because they don't believe that there is value, so they're not going to put it out there. I'm actually taking that different approach. I don't want, I want to help employees take over the brand accounts, not just do it off their own account. I want, I want big brand. I want Dell to do a takeover and allow their PR team, two people from their PR team, to present. And then I want them to give it to one of the people that's in their development uh, and in their developer lab and get on Periscope on the Dell account and tell the story. Because nobody's following those damn accounts just to hear what the brand has to say. What they are, hire, what they are doing doesn't have to hire social media people, so Dell doesn't have, no, they still need social media people because there's still plenty of social media. What I mean is when you, when you made that comment, you're, you're making the illusion that um, brands 
because brands aren't don't have employees on Twitter, they won't be able to embrace live streaming. I actually think it's the opposite. With Twitter, no one's going to give open their Twitter account handle and let people tweet out of it because it's hard to tell the story and understand like the same voice and shared opinion. But if you're able to do it on live stream, it's because you're, people are allowed to able to look the the employee in the eyeballs on the brand account. Therefore, the brand sees value of it because it's connecting and bridging it, and it is real people because. Great brands are great because they have great people, not because they have great logos. Yes, brands should be more personal. So that's my play on that. So, but yeah, hopefully you guys found some value in this. Hopefully you guys remember those two questions. Um, how my community going to connect and um, have conversations with me when I'm not on live stream? And then how am I going to educate my audience to connect with me on that platform? So, hey, Vicky Fitch, how are you? So, hopefully you guys have a good one. Hopefully I'm almost to JFK and I will be on my way to. Washington DC. I will probably do another Periscope from um, my term, from my gate um, on my debrief on Engage 2015 and what I learned um, on stage. That I bid you guys adieu. Check out thinklikeafan.video. Thinklikeafan.video. You guys can um, sign up for my email newsletter. You also get the, the tips there as well. So thinklikeafan.video. Make it a great day. Cheers.